Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for Guitar Lessons 365.com. Got a banger today. We're gonna redo Dr. Feelgood. So I did this maybe a decade ago. Um, so we're gonna put this all together in one video and just kind of really uh, update the lesson. Um, hopefully teach it a little bit more succinctly. I'm a little bit better at this online thing now, I hope. Uh, so we're gonna go through this. It's a great song. It's kind of in honor of Mick Mars. I know he's kind of retiring from Molly Crew. And this song is just, him and Nikki just knocked it out of the park with this one. Uh, it's got one of the greatest riffs in hard rock history. The solos are just sick. So it's just a lot of fun to play. It's just a great, fantastic song all the way around. So just like mini Molly Crew, they just did, did so much great stuff back in the day. So we're gonna go through this note for note here. Um, now, before I get into it, please subscribe to the channel. If you have not already, ring the notification bell so you know release a new video. You can like and comment on them. It really helps uh, with the YouTube to send it out to more people. Say, like, hey, people are watching this, so we'll send it to more people who are subscribed to him. And that was, so that would really help. Um, and if you really wanna support what I do online at all, and you know, help me uh, feed my dogs and everything, click the link in the description. That's the, a link to my online guitar school. It's the GL365 Academy that contains all of my guitar courses. Give you full access to all my courses from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training theory, guitar tone. I do live uh, chat, live video streams with Academy members every weekend. Um, so we have new courses going live all the time. So uh, please come join us. All right, so let's get into this. We are in D standard as Motley Crue does quite a bit. Now, for those of you that are uh, don't really know what D standard is, they think D means drop D every time. There's a difference. Um, now I'm actually making a video uh, about that as well too, because a lot of times when I do Motley Crue or kind of thing like this, that's actually not in drop D. It's in D standard. Um, they 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 don't get it. So D standard is all strings on the guitar tuned down a whole step. So you could all the chords still work like normal, uh, like as if it's tuned to. to standard, but since you're tuning every single um, string down the same amount, those chord shapes still work, it just sounds a lot lower, and this is one of Motley Crue's favorite tunings. So this is D standard, so every single string down a whole step. So the E string becomes um, a D string, the A string becomes a G string, the D string becomes a C string, a G string becomes an F, um, the uh, B string becomes an A, and the high uh, E string tunes down to D as well. So now, I'm not gonna call them that <laughs> throughout the lesson, I'll just kinda say low E, I'm just gonna call it out like it's standard, but um, you, you know what I'm doing. All right, so let's start with this intro, which is just an amazing intro that they have here. <laughs> So this, this album just kind of really reset the bar for like tone. I mean, this album sounded absolutely sick uh, when it came out. And this riff, just this intro just sounds massive. And it's just a low E string. I know it's a D, but just that rhythm. Down up. I'm just going down up, up, down, 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 up, down, down, down. It's kind of slightly palmed. So just lock into that groove. And then over that, um, Mick adds some, um, so it comes in with this harmonic stuff, but it starts off with this A. He could be playing it here. Or he could be playing it here. Can't really find video evidence of where he's playing that A at. The harmonics start right here, so maybe this is a better idea. So he gets a little bit of uh, vibrato bar action on that A, and then we go into the actual harmonic section. just, it's so ominous, it's very, very cool. So what are the harmonics? So it starts off as single harmonics and it becomes like double stop harmonics. 
Um, so we're going to start here at the harmonica, the seventh fret on the G string. So, and then, so you got to do the whammy bar dips in time with that. So he kind of keeps that consistent. Just like that. And then he does the same thing, but the harmonica, the fifth fret on the G string still. Back to the harmonica, the seventh fret on the G. And then when we get up, we're going to jump up here to the 12th fret, and this is when we start doing double stops. So we're playing two strings at the same time. So this is the harmonica, the 12th fret across the D and the G. So that, you might not call them double stops, you're not actually stopping the string, but. So, and then now we're going to do the two string harmonics all the way. So we're going to stay, stay on the same two D and G strings, but at that seventh fret again. Down to the fifth fret again, still the D and the G harmonics. Back to the seventh fret harmonics there at the D and the G. And, and then back to the 12th. Those are the last one. So it's single harmonics here, seven, five, seven, single harmonics, and then double harmonics, 12, seven, five, and then back up, seven, 12. So. And then it goes into the main riff, which is killer. A couple slides, maybe. And then... All right, so this one. This riff, if you listen to the isolated track, he's actually doing a couple of tracks here on, in the, uh, for this riff. He does have one track in there where he actually is not doubling it. He's not going. He's just going. He's kind of accenting the notes so you can hear it. So you can hear that. In, it's actually the isolated track. That's the one you hear more. Um, but there's obviously another guitar in there. And then as he plays it live, he's doing that. But what I see, uh, I'm, you know, there's a slight difference in how he plays the riff when he does it twice in a row. So let's start here. We start with the open E string, a couple hits on it, and then we're gonna go. This is gonna be slightly palm muted, second fret twice on the low E, then twice on the third fret, but then once at the fourth, and then the open A. That's the first time play. You're gonna hit that open A, but not the second time. So this. So what? That's taking us to an A chord. You got sus four to a, just resolve into an A major. Kind of a. Um, and then, so that A being the last note, we're gonna go there to this second fret there on the. Uh, um, G string, third fret there on the B, and then resolve that down to the second fret across both strings. So this. Then we're gonna do this riff again, but that last note is not gonna be the open A string, it's gonna be the open E. So. Like that. Why? Because it goes to an E chord. To this. Dominant seven sharp nine. So it is. So instead of going to that A, same riff, this last note after hitting this fourth fret one time, just the open E. Back to the open E. And as you're hitting that open E, it gives you time to jump up here and do that E dominant seven sharp nine, which is the seventh fret on the A, sixth fret on the D, seven on the G, eight on the B. Hit that a couple times. So all together, the riff is this. All right, now we get to the verse. Now that, that riff right there is gonna be the chorus too. So we pretty much got 
the chorus taken care of as well. So then the vocals come in and, and we have this, I call it like a verse pre-chorus section because it's kind of this verse and it just kind of really kind of um, stripped down and then it starts uh, kind of started doing this driving rhythm of it, but it's kind of the same chords. And I feel like that's pushing you to the chorus. So that's kind of like a pre-chorus. So I just kind of verse and pre and kind of teach them together. So it looks like this. All right, so that's kind of really stripped down at the very beginning. We're just this A power chord. And then you go into the third fret on the low E string. And then back to the, to the A so Just like that. And then we're, we're going to... So we get that A down the third fret on the low E, then back to the A. And then he's going to go down. And on the way down, he likes to hit the full uh, G power chord. So A power chord, and then that third fret power chord for the low E string. And then the E power chord. So all together so far. And again. All right, and then we're gonna ramp it up a little bit, and it's gonna sound like this. All right, so that's uh, uh, just the same chord. And then, but when you get back to the A, kind of chug on that open A string. And then we're gonna go, we're gonna go back and hit that low E string, kind of muted the third fret. Open A power chord, and then that G power chord, down to the E power chord, and, and kind of just staying and chugging on that. So with this. And then we go back and start this again. You see, you see how you're always leading into that A, that G note. So after you've done that a few times, a couple times, and it goes, there's a little three hits at the end that takes us into the chorus. Uh, and then the, the chorus is the pretty much the same that we did before. Let's do the riff a couple of times there, and then you go back into the verse, first pre-chorus section. Nothing new there. Same chorus again after that. And then after the second chorus, we get, I, I call this kind of like the bridge. Um, it's almost like a second chorus, really. But um, so this bridge is uh, pretty cool, though. It looks like this. All right, so that is just gonna be um, this open G power chord. So uh, what makes something a power chord? You take the third of the chord. So it's a major chord, remove the third, and you just have the root and the fifth of the chord, and that calls it a power chord. So not all power chord shapes are played like that. Some can be played open, as long as it just has the root and the fifth in it. So this is what this chord does. This is uh, the low E string, third fret. You're gonna mute the A string typically is where the third is at on a, on a G chord or the D string. So you're going to mute that, open D, open G, third fret there on the B and the high E. So these are just Gs and Ds. That's all we got here. Make sure you get a G power chord. So we have this. And then from there to the A chord. And then we're going to come up here and play, play the E here. You got an E power chord to the seventh fret of the A string. Um, and then you can you hit the low E in there as well. And they're gonna come down here to the low E power chord. Kind of chug on that a little bit. So this. Repeat. 
Peace. Then. So that last one, instead of jumping up, we get a G, V, A, and then take it to a B major chord. Up to, it's a, at the second fret there on the A. And then the fourth fret across the D, G, and the B. You don't have to use your pinky like I do. You can do it like that, do it like that. If you use your pinky, you can keep your wrist a little bit more comfortable, so that's why I always use it. All right, so that's the bridge. Now, coming out of the bridge, we have the first solo. It's a quick little solo, um, and just the solo is over the main riff, like the main chorus riff, uh, so you already know that. So let me just go through the solo for you real quick, uh, and then I'll show you how to play it. So we have this. All right, so it's it's a it's not one of those solos typically you're gonna be able to get note for note just because of the uh, he just kind of especially this descent. There's, there's lots of pinch harmonics all over the place, um, and it's got that huge guitar riff being played over it. So you really kind of hear, especially that fast lick, you hear it's kind of hard to kind of hear even on the. Um, uh, isolated track, it's because the guitar, other guitar, is still on there, so it's it's kind of still buried. Uh, so it's hard to hear exactly what you can tell him what he's doing. It's just the exact notes getting exactly recreated. It's not one of those things. But you're gonna start with a unison bit. Um, so you're gonna just start with the 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 twelfth fret on the high E string and the fifteenth um, fret there on the B. So you play those <coughs> and bend up the note on the B string. Till it matches the note on the high E. He does that a couple times. And then it gets a bit hairy. It's got kind of one of those things. So it's kind of like a, a kind of a Dorian blues hybrid scale. So it's kind of like um, first he's gonna start here at the uh, 12th fret on the high E string, and then you're going to descend 15, 14, 12 on the B string. Then go over to the 15th fret there on the um, G string, and then back to that 12. So and so those opening notes are kind of staccato, so we're kind of kind of re release the pressure as soon as you play. And then from there, he just kind of goes kind of free wheels it and so it sounds like he's doing something kind of like this so when you get back to that 12 there on the b string then come back down to the g and just pull off 15 14 to 12 on the on the g so it's over to 14 on the d string so after you get that 14 on the D, I'm thinking it's mostly kind of a legato lick from there. So you the 14 on the D, go back to the 12th fret on the G, hammer 14, pull back off to 12, then 14 on the D, pull off to 12. So it's, and then slide 14 to 12 down on the A, pull off to 10, and he comes up and grabs the 14th fret there on the G with a little pinch harmonic at the end of the lick. So it, Now this lick just goes by at a million miles an hour, so you just kind of... And I'll be fine, right? Um, uh. And then we're going to come back here, and he, he, uh, this is one of kind of uh, Nick Love's coming, coming down to the second fret there on the G. And really digging in, he does it a few times in this song, um, digging in on the uh, second fret there on the G string, so you bend that up, hit like a killer pinch harmonic, and then just keep picking it, while you're kind of trying to hit pinch harmonics, kind of, so you're kind of changing the position of the pick to change the harmonic, so. and he's slowly letting go of the bend there while he's doing it. 
And then he's gonna do a quick little bend and release again to the open G string. And then a little bit of a, a bar up. And that's the end of the first solo. So it's a pretty quick little solo. Um, now we get to, out of that solo, we're back to the, where are we at here? Um, so we go back into the verse and the pre-chorus is the same riffs. There's a fill that happens over this pretty cool though. Um, so if you want to do that, it's kind of like this. All right, so he's just throwing guitar layers all over the place. If you're just uh, the only guitarist in the band, you're obviously gonna just stick with the riffs, right? Uh, but if you wanna see what that feels on, it's gonna be the uh, quick little uh, bend of the 13th fret there on the B. And then resolve it there to the 14th fret there on the G. And then we have this. So that's gonna be holding the 13th fret there on the B string. And you're gonna have your, your first finger at the 12th fret on the high E and the 14th fret on the high E. So you pick just basically first the 13 on the B and the 14 on the high E together. And then pull off to that 12. And then back to the, hit it a couple times with the 14. And then come down here, the 10th fret there on the B, 12th on the high E. Just kind of let that go, so. And then he has a quick little, you hear this overdub come in there. Uh, it's his um, a unison bend here at the 17th fret there. So that same unison bend we did at the 12th, just move it to the 17th, so it's gonna be 20 fret. It's gonna be played on the B string. And then you hear a lick kind of like really low in the mix. It's, kind of, it's, like, it's like, kind of sounds like noise. It's probably around the E, E, e minor, but I, I can't, it's, it's just way too buried. You can't really hear where it's, what's going on there. Um, but anyway, so those are the fills there. If, you, if you're one of the fills that are happening in that verse. Then it goes back into the chorus again, same chorus, same bridge section, so nothing different there. Out of that bridge, we go back into a, basically a variation of the intro. So back to... And then, then he goes into some harmonics again like he did in the intro, but it's shorter and leads us into the main guitar solo. The harmonics, he's basically doing the two string harmonics across the D and the G. First to the seventh fret. Same little bar dips there. Five across the D and the G. Seven across the D and the G. And then the 12. And then the, the main solo comes in. So that's what's going on there. It's very similar, just kind of some uh, shortened version of the intro. Um, and then we get to the main solo. Now the main solo is over the bridge riff. So you already know that. So let's just get into this solo. It's got some crazy stuff in it. So we'll do our best. So here we go. <laughs> I mean, that's like one of the greatest solos in hard rock history. I mean, this just got the coolest thing all in it. It's just very, very well done. So what is going on here? Uh, once again, one of these things, so many crazy pinch harmonics being thrown at us here. It's really hard to recreate all that stuff, right? So um, don't beat yourself up about it. We're just going to try to do it as best we can. So we're going to start here with this. It kind of kind of starts sliding up the B string a little bit. Enter that unison had been at the 12th fret again. So it's kind of what, how we started the last solo, right? But then he goes into this. So you can try to pick all those notes. I don't think he's picking them all. You can do kind of the Eddie trick where you're like Eddie would play this lick. He'd be, he would play the the notes on the bottom string with hammer on. So pick 12 on the B, hammer on 14, hammer on 15, and then do a quick uh, pick the 12, 14. So starting with the up stroke. So up, down, up on the high E. So it's like. So it kind of sounds kind of closer 
so he's doing probably something like that. It's a, com a combination of um, pick and legato, but that, it's just those ascending six notes. And then he does this. So he's just sliding up the E string and then hitting the opening. He does that a couple times and then he got a really difficult pinch harmonic there at the 18th fret on the G string. So that's up, uh, you're gonna bend the 18th fret on the G string and catch our uh, pitch harmonica. And then we're gonna come back down to the second fret there on the G string. And like I said before, he loves kind of bending up. He catches a great harmonic again on this one. He's kind of just doing that again. And then kind of hitting those pinch harmonics on it, always kind of letting it go, just lowering the bend a little bit. But then he comes over, over to the D string and does a quick little trill between zero and two on the D. So. And then we have this ascending lick. So you can play this different ways. Like that kind of puts you closer to where the tapping's at. But if you watch him, um, and kind of more videos of that era, um, and not too far, like in the 80s and 90s when he's playing live. He does it, he plays the note up there, and then he jumps back like that. So however uh, you know you want to do it. But uh, the way he's doing it is that the 10th fret here on the, it's 10 and 12 on the low E. You hit each note twice. So 10, down up on the 10 and the 12 on the low E. Same thing on the A. And then 11, 14 on the D. And then 12, 15 on the G. And this is that. That's building up to that B chord, which is where the, while the tapping's over that B chord that happens at the end of that bridge riff. So. And then we get to the, the, um, the, the tapping part. Now, in the tap, in tapping section, when he first recorded this and was performing in the 80s, he tapped with his middle finger. So, eh, which would make sense because it's a quick transition, right? Uh, later on, you see him actually flip his pick and hold it with his uh, middle finger and then tap with it. Um, I don't know why he chose but that, and then he went back and grabbed it for that harmonic. But, um, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna tap with my middle finger like he did kind of in that original era when he played this. So after the, what you're gonna do is you you're first gonna hear the note, the B string kind of been sent in, be sent in motion, but you can just kind of flick it right. And then we have the actual first tapping patterns. Actually, two tapping patterns in this. Um, usually, we see somebody play it. They're gonna play the same tapping pattern the whole way through. The very, he changes it at the very very end. So the tapping pattern is, is cool though. So after you set the string in motion, the tapping pattern itself is gonna, you're gonna hammer the note in the, in the fret hand first, then tap, then pull that off to the open string. So it's kind of. Like All right, so it's kind of re reverse of how you usually see tapping done. So he's gonna start here at 11 on the B string. You're gonna, and then tap the 12th fret. So you're always going to be tapping at the 12th the whole time. And then pull off to the open string. And then the melody note's going to change. So it's just that, that note on the melody, the, on, on the B string, just one finger is all it takes. So the, you just need to know the melody now. So let's like take a look at the melody first. So it starts there at that 11 that we just did. Then 9. Then 7. And then basically, that's, that's the three note pattern that he's using. Uh, he's just going down the scale. And then he's gonna go back up to the ninth fret and go three notes down from that one. That's gonna be nine, seven, five. So we have 11, nine, seven. Then the next three notes is gonna start from the nine. Nine, seven, five. Then we're gonna start now from the seven. Three notes down from that. I'm gonna stay within the scale, so this one's gonna be seven, five, four. So I have this. 
and then it's going to be five, four, two. So tapping. I just said I was not going to use my index finger, and I did. So we get that, that same pattern. You're just changing the note. So what happens here is when it gets down here to like the fifth fret, after he goes, after he goes down to five, uh, uh, seven, five, four, this is when he changes the pattern to kind of a more standard tapping pattern. And when he goes, he goes like, so this is now just a, you hear the tap first, then the fretted note, then the pull off of the open string. So you you go into the bat, that pattern. Kind of when you come back up to the five, the second time. And then you're gonna just play tap, tap first, then five, then the four, two, back to the four, back to the two. So, so it's a little tiny detail. You can stay with the original pattern, nobody's gonna know, but if you slow it down a lot and you can hear it, he changes the pattern at the very end, whether he does that live or not or if it was just kind of something he did on a whim when he was recording it. But it does change at the very, very end. Uh, but this, like I said, it sounds cool. Just kind of stick with the original pattern. Doesn't matter. All right, now, after you get down, you do that 4-2, four, 4-2, two, four, two, the very end, he comes up and he grabs a harmonic. Gotta have some delay on there. So that's the harmonic at the fifth fret there on the B string. And then, and then just this crazy bar dive to kind of, it really takes all the strings slack and just blah, 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 blah. But it's, uh, I'm not gonna do that because it's gonna throw completely everything out of tune. All right, so from there we get to the main riff again, but it's a kind of a, uh, the whole band's not playing, it's just kind of like a subdued. It's kind of a breakdown section, but you can still hear that riff kind of going, kind of really muted, and there's a little, a lick in there. A little siren sound, which is just like a slow trill between 12 and 15 on the B. And then like a slow bar dot. Cool. Um, uh, siren sound, so it's pretty cool. All right, then we get to this bridge again, but it's a, a variation of the bridge riff. Um, so uh, let's see if you can see the difference. So it's basically a combination of the chorus riff and the bridge. So we start with that same G, A, but instead of coming up here, like that we did in the previous bridge, it's that G to A, and then it's the first half of the chorus riff. So just like that. Repeat. Three times. And then it's the same ending. G to A to B. And that takes us to the outro section, which is a series of just kind of guitar fills over, um, over the main riff. So it looks like this. So some double stops here at the 12th fret across the D and the G. And you pick those, slide down to the 9 across the D and the G. So just keep that double stop down. And then back again. So you do it a couple times. So wait, wait, wait. And again. One more time. And then we're going to do it like this. 
which is just going to be that 12 to 9 slide first, and then hit the 12 slide up to 14 on those two strings. And that's about it. So and it just kind of continues that and, and it fades out on us. So it is a killer song. It is so fun to play the, the riffs. Uh, the solos are just crazy and they're fun to play too. So hopefully you will have fun uh, learning this and, and playing it yourself. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.